Hey there in YouTube land, and well, a special hey to uh, Tino from Ned Creepy Monster Squad, who just did a really great video that I'm responding to. Basically, it's about classic versus modern day horror films, and this is actually a really easy one for me to figure out. Uh, I could have said, you know, well, take a combination of this and that, kind of like a Chinese uh, plate, uh, but no, I'm not going to go with that. I wanted to uh, give a definitive answer, and it's actually not really as hard as you think. You'd think with all the movies that I've got here, all the especially all the horror and stuff like that, that my answer is pretty much either going to be mixed or it's going to be leaned in a certain way. But it may not be leaning in the way that you think. And here's the thing. For me, I have to say classic. Uh, classic horror movies, basically, they're called classics for a reason, and not just because they're older. And classic is a relative term in some cases. Uh, I'm a slasher movie fan. Uh, a, sl a classic slasher movie is between 1980 to 1985. And I'm pretty much going to cut classic off around that area. Because that way you get into all the different forms of horror. That, that matter or can't have anything original or new to put into, the, uh, into it. Uh, and here's the thing. When you look at the stuff that was put out by AIP with, with Roger Corman, when you look at the Val Luton stuff, you have, when you look at the early... Friday the 13th, Friday the 13th, kind of knock off My Bloody Valentine, uh, Happy Birthday to Me type of stuff, then you notice that there's a huge disconnect with what's out there now. And here's the, the big thing. Even the stuff that I like, even the horror movies that come out nowadays that I really like, there is something that is flawed and missing. And uh, most of the time, that tends to be character. Any type of character development or within the plot at all, most of the Saw movies, honestly, can you really tell me that any of the characters in the Saw movies, except from the killer, are actually memorable characters that you're going to remember down the road at all? I bet you still know who who the uh, who the girl was in the uh, in Friday the Thirteenth Part Two. You still know her, but you do, you know what? You don't know who acted in the Saw Saw movies, and you probably don't care. Uh, the the collector. You, you remember the killer on that one? Yes. Do you remember the victims? Not very often. And even when people try to do characterization in films, like Rob Zombie, they tend to overdo it and make it laughably bad. Just watch his Halloween films. The first one is watchable. It's not a good film, but it's watchable. And he characterizes the hell out of that film to the point where you just don't want to know. You want to know less. There's some hilarious scenes in Halloween. It is a great movie to make fun of Rob Zombie's Halloween. Take that back further to the original Halloween, where you learned a lot less about the characters, and it dealt with a lot more mood and atmosphere. A lot of, uh, like, the music, the uh, tempo, the, uh, the, the framing of the films. All this would be lost later on. Rob Zombie is, is by... All traits a musician. And guess what? He doesn't know how to use music effectively in his films. One of the most hilarious scenes I've seen in any film is little Michael Myers sitting down on his porch step, being, you know, it cut back and forth between his mom, played by Sherry Moon Zombie, uh, stripping at a strip club, and the song Love Hurts is playing. This is, this is a Halloween film. Uh, Look at the older stuff. Stuff that Vincent Price uh, did. You're a Vincent Price fan. Uh, <clears throat> just some amazing stuff done with the right amount of atmosphere, the right, the right shoot, the right shots, the right characterization. It was just so much better. Even the movies I like. I love the movie Martyrs. It, one of the hardcore like French uh, horror films in the, in the new wave of French horror. But you know what? Character-wise, it's not there. There's a lot of atmosphere there. But, uh... Is it a classic, modern day, to a certain extent? Will it be remembered up there with movies like, I don't know, The Shining and The Exorcist and stuff like, and I don't know, the, even uh, The Mambo Dr. Fibes or maybe, uh, let's take, uh, let's go older and say The Black Cat or uh, Top London, for instance? Probably not. Uh, these movies are movies of their time. And when you see a half-decent one, you're like, thank God. Uh... I watched Evil Dead 
and Maniac. Both I thought were pretty good remakes. Uh, uh, they were enjoyable. Enjoyable. Yeah, I enjoyed them for what they were. But uh, honestly, at the end of the day, it's still not going to replace Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, or Army of Darkness. It's a nice footnote, and it's good to know that they're still making some fairly decent films. Uh, and when you look at stuff like, uh, even the stuff I like, High Tension, very flawed film. I had a lot of fun with it. Does it compare to like a, a classic you know, film like, say, The Giallos of Argento, like a Tenebrae, or even a Four Flies in Grey Velvet, or even kind of these lesser ones like uh, like Cat of Nine Tails? No, it, it, it really, really doesn't. And a lot of these directors that we see, the big directors, some of their best stuff is unfortunately behind them. But thank God we had that best stuff there preserved in Blu-ray with lots of features and stuff like that because we can watch them over and over again. The cool thing about classic versus horror is that there is so much classic. And the sad thing is that as it comes from modern stuff, there's really not much classic being made. I have fun watching movies like Wrong Turn and stuff like that, but honestly, I could not tell you one Wrong Turn actor from another Wrong Turn actor. I know Elijah Dushku was in the first one, and there's mutants and whatever, but uh, I just had fun with them. But at the end of the day, I'm glad that my collection will hopefully lean more towards the classic stuff. When I ordered from Arrow video this time around, I went for a director that I think of as a classic thriller director. You're going to find out more about that when I when I get my Arrows Com. If they ever ship them at the warehouse, which they are still at waiting to be shipped, what the hell, come on, ship my movies. Uh, but no, classic. There's no doubt, no way, but no way past it. And honestly, even the newer stuff now, it's all remake heavy. Uh, and if you're not, if they're not remaking the stuff that 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 was done classically, then they're remaking foreign films that were made the year before. <clears throat> Something is inherently wrong with the movie system when everything has to be back in the day. Let me put it to you this way. In the early 80s, there were remakes, too. We'll call them The Fly and The Thing. And they were incredible movies that are now considered classic. Invasion of the Body Snatchers by Philip Kaufman. Uh, incredible remakes. Now, compare that to the remakes of today. And, uh... Classic wins. Again, it's an opinion-based thing, and this is my opinion. So, uh... Some people may love modern day horror. That may be their bag. And I will watch modern day horror and I'll enjoy it for what it is. But at the end of the day, when it comes to more what's better, what's more long term interesting, what's more technically proficient, then there is no argument. Uh classic wins because it is classic and uh I don't consider the slashers the eighties. My better half doesn't well when I consider slasher movies into the classic genre. She's not an eighties uh, horror fan. No, no, it's it started to be the same starting in the 80s. You, you think it started to be the same in the 80s? Yep. But here's the difference. You, you, you've watched some of the Friday 13th movies with me. Yes. Okay, now, <clears throat> all that being said, and you've seen some of the more modern-day slasher things that I've, you've actually managed to sit and watch with me. Yes. <clears throat> if I say Shelley from Friday the 13th, you know what part I'm talking about. Shelley's the big guy in part three, the one... Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a more memorable character. It's a more, you know, when, once you know who it is, basically it's not... It's the same gimmick. That's the thing. But Maybe it's not it was the, the character. original gimmick. But that's not the thing, though. It's not that the gimmick, it's the fact that the characters are not as cookie-cutter back then as they are now. You can put any person in, in a Saw film. You can put any person in one of those, in one of the modern-day slasher films... Hell, look at the, the newer uh, Nightmare on Elm Street film. Basically, it's the same CW actors over and over again. Uh, say what you want about some of the early stuff. There were actors like Kevin Bacon. There were people that had actual plots. There were people that you could actually care for. Pretty much everybody is an interchangeable douche nowadays in these films. And... Uh, yeah, but the plot is the same. There's it doesn't the same. matter that the plot's the same. and It doesn't matter... In the 30s, they were making monster movies. Uh, 30s and 40s, they made monster movies. But those movies haven't been done before. They've been done, even on stage, they've been Grand Guignon, stuff like that. And 
all of this as repetitive of something else is really like four or five actual original plots and everything's a take on that. It's just how you relate it and take it from that. Uh, when you look at Bela Lugosi's Dracula, it's, you know, it may seem dated and stuff like that, and you watch the Spanish one, which I actually find a little bit better, and you see Christopher Lee, it's still Dracula, it's a very different take on Dracula, and it, you remember it because Christopher Lee's performance, some of the uh, actors there, like Peter Cushing and stuff like that, that's, I find the same way with some of the 80s slasher film. You remember stuff like My Bloody Valentine and stuff like that because you got the actors and you got the setting that really makes it stand out. However, when you fast forward to like a more modern day film, nothing stands out. Everything is kind of bland and kind of like lacks any sort of subtext or real acting, or real ability to do anything. It's okay to like to take a camera and shoot and try to be proficient, but you, there's got to be more heart to it than that. And at the, at the end of the day, uh, just like many of the ca characters in a, in the original My Bloody Valentine, the movies lack heart. And uh, that's why I choose classics. And for me right now, guys, it's time for tea.